Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor Podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're looking at the top players to target in Game Week 29, Sun Dream Team. Hope you all enjoyed the international break, but now it is back to Dream Team planning. Game Week 29 is a Premier League double game week for all teams. The deadline is Saturday the 30th of March, 11.30am. And we will be doing a deadline stream over on the Dream Team Tonic Podcast on YouTube at 10.30am. Hoping to get some leaks from that first fixture, which is Newcastle uh, versus West Ham. So we'll keep you all up to date with that while answering any of your dreams in questions. And um, so Premier League double game week this week. And I think it could be a big one for boosters. We're going to cover that later in the episode. I've added a new section for boosters and captaincy picks. So that'll be at the end. You can skip around. There'll be timestamps below. The thing about coming off an international break is we've got a lot of um, injuries to think about. Some... We're not so convinced as others, um, but we'll be covering that as well. Um, after Game Week 29, this Premier League double game week, Game Week 30 and 31 sees the return of European fixtures. Um, so we don't want to go too far away from our usual European picks. Um, but there are some, like Cole Palmer, for example, that do look quite appealing. But one thing to consider, the European game week starting up. European teams will have six fixtures across the next three weeks versus four fixtures for non-European sides. So it is important that we do still mostly target these European players. Um, looking a bit further along as well, up to game week 32. Game week 32, we've had um, a new double game week added with some rearranged fixtures. In that game week 32, we've got the FA Cup matches and then we've got Premier League doubles as well. So some have got FA Cup and Premier League and some have got Premier League doubles. And um, We've even got a blank thrown in there for Tottenham. So you can see that in the final column there if you want to pause the video and have a quick look. Or you can just go to ffstuff.co.uk and all of this is there as well. So quite a lot of double game weeks coming up. 29, 30, 31 and 32. The only teams that double in all four of these double game weeks, City, Arsenal and Liverpool. So we're probably not going to drift too far from those teams as well. But there are plenty of other good players to mix up our teams a little bit. Um, so let's go through these teams one by one and look at who we think have the best fixtures. Um, so I've put a little tick next to each of them. Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Newcastle, Villa. Chelsea, Spurs, Fulham and West Ham. These are the ones that I'm going to highlight. Obviously, there's other picks from other teams, but these are the ones that I think have got the best um, fixtures this week. So Liverpool to start off with. Two home fixtures, uh, Brighton and Sheffield United. And then they've got the best home record in the Premier League. They're unbeaten at home. They've got 11 wins and three draws conceding the least amount of goals at home as well. So I think Liverpool look like they have the best fixtures this week. Then Manchester City. Um, it's a bit of a tougher one, but still two home matches this week. Arsenal and Aston Villa. They're 22 matches unbeaten now, and they're unbeaten at home as well this season. Um, but they did lose to Arsenal and lose to Villa away from home this season. So these will be tougher games. Arsenal. They've got Manchester City away and then Luton at home. So it's a really, really tough fixture in what could be um, almost the title decider or, or a big match in the run uh, race for the title. Arsenal City at the Etihad to start with. But then I do like the look of that Arsenal home fixture um, against Luton. So if you are a little bit worried about Arsenal players, I think that Luton fixture does make it look a lot better. Chelsea, two home fixtures, Burnley and Man United. And they're in good form. They've got just one loss in the last eight games. And then Spurs, Luton at home, West Ham away. Spurs, they've not won in their last three matches away at West Ham. But I still think that these fixtures do look good. Luton at home in the first one, West Ham away in the second one. But obviously, with Spurs, with Chelsea, no European football to follow. And then if we look a bit further with Spurs, they do have that blank in game week 32, which means that if you do go for these Spurs players, you're going to want to leave them eventually. United, two away fixtures, Brentford and Chelsea. They do have back-to-back -back wins though, Man United. Liverpool and Everton, really, really good wins for them. Picking up a little bit of form now. So yeah, Man United fixtures are looking pretty good. Um, that double game week is followed by Liverpool in game week 30, which doesn't look as good. 
Um, then it's Bournemouth away, Coventry at Wembley, and then Sheffield United at home in 32. So if you don't want to go for it now, game week 32 looks like a good week to go back to Man United. Um, and then you have West Ham, Newcastle away, Tottenham away. Like I said, they're that first kickoff. They're in good form at the minute, but their European draw does look pretty tough. Uh, they face Bayer Leverkusen, who I think are unbeaten this season. So that is going to be a really tough one for them. But as double game weeks go, it's not the worst. Um, Aston Villa, I'm not feeling so good about Aston Villa at the minute. They've got Wolves at home, City away. I think this looks like quite a tough double. But the European fixtures, they probably did get one of the better draws. So Aston Villa face Lille at home in the first one and then away in game week 31. Newcastle, two home fixtures, but a little bit of unreliable form. So they've got West Ham at home, Everton at home, which I think it looks okay. Um, obviously been a little bit dodgy at the back, but I still think there are a few players that we can look at. So we're going to cover them in this one. Um, and then lastly, I'm actually not going to do a section on them, um, but Fulham do have what looks to be a good double. So Fulham have got Sheffield United away and Nottingham Forest away, which do look good on paper. The only thing that's a little bit concerning about Fulham is they've won three of their last four, which is brilliant, but they only have one win in their last six away from Craven Cottage. And obviously, as you can see, these fixtures are both away from home. So obviously they've got Moonies, who's um, looking pretty good up top, but it is a punt. They won't have Europe and they've got a few defensive options as well, like Robinson, that's looking okay at the minute. But for me, I would, wouldn't want to be targeting any of these Fulham players on Dream Team. So I'm not going to cover them in this episode. I'm going to stick to the ones that I've ticked here. So I think Liverpool have the best fixtures in game week 29. Brighton at home, Sheffield United at home. A nice home double game week. And like I said, they've got really, really good um, home record this season. Doubles in their next four game weeks as well. So double in 29 Premier League. Double in game week 30. Away at United. Home to Atalanta. They'll be wanting to redeem themselves against United. Game week 31. Crystal Palace at home. Atalanta away. And then game week 32. Fulham away. Everton away. So I'm going to start with Salah. It's the obvious place to start. He's got two goals, three assists in his last two starts. 28 points since coming back from injury. Little graphic there from ffstuff.co.uk. So nine points in that last match against Man United. 19 points in that match against Sparta Prague. Uh, I think this is a really, really good double game week for him. And I think that Salah is the best captain pick for game week 29. That's who my armband is on currently. Um, so I think he is going to be in a lot of teams if he isn't already. Darwin Nunes, 17 goals and 17 assists for the season so far. He did, well, he does have a flag at the minute with, I think it was a thigh injury. Uh, didn't go on the international break, but he's expected to be back for this week. Um, possible chance of rotation, I guess. Um, you have got Gakpo. Um, so maybe Gapo starts one, Darwin starts the other. But I still think he's a really, really good pick this week. And I'm potentially consider considering swapping Ollie Watkins for Darwin Nunes. Um, the only risk with this is that every time I seem to take Watkins out, he does do really well. And also Darwin Nunes is on eight yellow cards in the Premier League. So if he does pick up another two and gets to ten, um, he will get a two-match ban. Um, two assists against Man United, eight points, so did well in that last fixture. Uh, but at the minute, I would obviously prioritise Salah over him, and obviously most teams are going to have Haaland as well. McAllister, second most points over the last six game weeks, scoring 71 points. Um, he's got a good attacking threat. He's with Sabozlai, um, just in front of... Uh, Endo at the moment and he does seem to be getting quite, uh, forward quite well some of his points did come from goals scored from the penalty spot um, and he was taking a lot of set pieces but I think Sabozlai has taken quite a few of these back so maybe not as good of an option but he would be a decent differential and then you have Luis Diaz as well fourth most points over the last six game weeks with 61 so 10 points less than McAllister um, but I still think I'd prefer to pick Luis Diaz uh, for this game week. So Luis Diaz and McAllister. 
slightly more differential picks from Liverpool. I had put Virgil van Dijk and Robertson um, as the joint fourth highest scoring defenders over the last six. But Robertson went off with an ankle injury yesterday on international duty, which has messed up a lot of people's um, potential plans for part of the bus. He's in my team. I'd already used my part of the bus chip, um, but he, I've seen him in a lot of people's teams and a lot of people's plans for part of the bus. So that has scuppered things a little bit. I still think that Virgil van Dijk is a good pick, um, but I'm pretty sure that Robertson's injury isn't one of these international break injuries. It looked legit. Um, so bad news for Robertson owners. Um, but Virgil van Dijk, if you haven't got him already, I would definitely get him in. And especially if I was playing part of the bus. I think I'd look now to Connor Bradley if I wanted the second best Liverpool asset at the back. 46 points in this time frame. So not far off of uh, Virgil van Dijk with his um, 49 but I'm a little bit worried about Trent's possible return. Uh, he's down as being targeting um, Man United as his return date. Um, so, I mean, that is only one game week away, game week 30. Whether or not Trent would be playing two games a week, I, I don't think that's likely when he does return. So there's a very good chance that Bradley still will get one game. Trent will get the other. But I don't like it a lot. That's the only downside. If you do go for Bradley... You might be wanting to move it on to uh, Trent when he's back. In terms of the other defensive options, I'm not that keen. Um, Simakas obviously did well earlier in the season, playing at left back. But you've got Joe Gomez who can also play at left back as well. And we know that Liverpool do rotate these defenders a lot. Uh, Konate just played 90 minutes again, back from injury. Uh, he played for France yesterday. So Gomez, although he can play, Right back, left back, centre back. There are a lot of other options. I'd put Gomez above Simakas in my plans, but really I'd avoid the both of them. I think that Virgil van Dijk and Conor Bradley still the best picks for me at the back for Liverpool. Manchester City. So a tough double game week this week. Arsenal at home, Aston Villa at home. But like I said, they are unbeaten at the Etihad this season. Um, they've got Crystal Palace in game week 30 away from home, and then Real Madrid away from home. Obviously, there could be rotation there because if they're playing Real Madrid in that second fixture, maybe they'll want to keep their best players fresh. But the title race is still quite tight. Maybe it'll be different after game at 29. But if the title race is still really, really tight, um, I, I don't think they can afford to take any risks in the Premier League still. Game at 31, Luton at home, Real Madrid home. Again, the same could happen. Possible rotation for Luton to have their best team ready for Real Madrid in the second fixture. But I guess a lot depends on what happens in the first leg as well. Um, and then game week 32, Chelsea in the FA Cup and then Brighton away from home. So not a terrible fixture run, but Arsenal, Villa and Real Madrid do stick out as the tough games there. Erling Haaland, he's in everyone's team at this point. But he has had two quiet game weeks in a row now. A two-pointer against Newcastle and a three-pointer against Liverpool. Maybe, just maybe, people will start going against Haaland as a captain pick. I went with him last week and he disappointed me. And a few other people went for more out there picks in Salah or Palmer and done really well. So I think a lot of people are going to be looking away from Erling Haaland this week for the captaincy. But I imagine he's still going to be staying in everyone's teams. Kevin De Bruyne, is he fit? He missed Newcastle, uh, that last fixture. Maybe a bit of mind games going into Arsenal or maybe just keeping him away from going international duty. Um, I think that he's going to be available for this Arsenal match and the Aston Villa match. Um, but I don't think he's a transfer in this week. I think there are other better options in midfield. Phil Foden, I think he's still a hold. Most people have got him. But what do we do about the defence and Edison? Because we've got a lot of injuries at the minute. So Edison, we're not really sure when he's going to be back. Obviously, Ortega played the last match, but probably was going to play it anyway. Edison picked up that injury in the match against Liverpool. Currently, I'm leaning towards selling him because I haven't because I've got I've got quite a few flagged players. But 
Edison is one of the ones that I think is genuinely flagged. Um, for me, if I was to sell him, I'm looking at Kelleher, Martinez, or potentially Raya. Um, all okay options with European football as well. But there's a lot of flagged players from City at the back. So Walker, he's down as being 50-50 after a hamstring injury against Brazil. Yeah, John Stones also going off against Belgium. And then Akanji um, went off as well. So three big injuries at the back. I think Diaz is probably now the safest City defender that you could go with. But I feel like I would just be avoiding it for Arsenal at home and Aston Villa at home. Tough fixtures and it feels like we're taking a little bit of a risk on whether these players are going to be fit enough. So I think I'd be avoiding City players even if I was playing part of the bus as well. Um, I don't think I'd be getting a City defender in this game week. On to my team, Arsenal. Just one loss in the last 10 matches and nine wins. So on really good form at the minute. But we are getting to a really, really tough um, fixture run for Arsenal. So 29 is City away. And then Luton at home. That Luton home game does look fine. City is going to be the massive, massive test. Game week 30, Brighton away from home. And then Bayern Munich at home in the Champions League. That is going to be a tough one. But Bayern have had a, um, Bayern have had a little bit of an up and down season. Um, so I'm feeling okay about that one. Game week 31, Villa and Bayern away. Not so confident about that game week. And in the game week 32, Wolves away from home and then Chelsea at home in the Premier League double game week. So double game weeks the whole way through for the next four weeks for Arsenal. It's a tough run, but Arsenal have been good. I'm not just saying that as a fan. Um, one of the best, or if not the best defence in the league, but we will face some tough oppositions. Gabriel and Saka, both flagged at the minute. I'm... Pretty sure that both of those players are going to be starting that Manchester City game. I've got both players in my team and I'm not thinking about removing them. I think they'll both be okay to play. Um, Saka is actually only 38% owned in the top 1k. Um, I think that's got to be his lowest in a while. He has just had a blank, so that could be part of the reason. But if there's people playing part of the bus this week, I think there'll be a lot of people that aren't bringing Saka back. Um, and if he's flagged, that might put a few people off. So I think that this could be a decent game week for Saka, um, especially with his ownership that low. Um, I expect him to have another good game week. Defensively, Ben White has the most points of any defender over the last six game weeks with 54 points. Um, Gabriel is second with 50. So the two Arsenal defenders... Most points over the last six game weeks out of defenders. If I was playing part of the bus, I would still be tempted to have one Arsenal defender in there. Um, I know a lot of people would be avoiding it because of the City fixture. But I think that City fixture is going to be tight. And then I think that Luton home fixture uh, obviously has good clean sheet potential. So I would still keep one in. If I had Gabriel already, I'd keep him. If I didn't, and I was choosing between the two, I'd probably go for Ben White, just in case Gabriel's genuinely injured, but I don't think he is. Um, I'm tempted by Raya, and I think a lot of people are going to think that's a little bit crazy with these fixtures. Um, he's had a good season. He's right up there for um, top goalkeepers on the game at the minute. I think Onana is the top keeper. Just double check. Um, Onana's the top keeper with 167 points. He then got Emmy Martinez with 139. And then David Raya, 134. He does make a lot less saves than those other two keepers. But I still think Arsenal are decent for clean sheets. Uh, he might get a few more saves than usual with these uh, tough fixtures. But he is going to play every single game as well for this um, run of four double game weeks. So I am quite tempted still by Raya. Kelleher probably looks better in the short term, but I'm just a little bit worried um, when Alisson might come back. But we'll go on to Liverpool in a minute. And I think that Arsenal are a better defence than um, Aston Villa with Emi Martinez. So I'm a little bit tempted to switch Edison to Raya myself. Um, Arsenal have the most clean sheets with 15 this season. Before we come on to Chelsea, if you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel to get kept up to date with all the latest Dream Team content. 
And then if you're looking for some more Dream Team content, the Dream Team Tonic Podcast, we do an episode once a week there, um, live on YouTube to our Patreon members. You can become a Patreon member with the link in the description below. We've got a Discord community, exclusive articles, and a load of other great features. So check that link in the description below. Um, and then you can watch the usual episodes later on in the week. The latest episode is live everyone uh, for everyone, so I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Also, we'll have that live stream that I mentioned um, Saturday morning, 10.30. So do join us there. That is for everyone live on YouTube. Chelsea, decent home double this game week. Burnley and Manchester United. Game week 30, they have a single against Sheffield United. So I know I said if you go for European, uh, non-European teams, you're going to be down on fixtures. Or you could get stuck with these players if you get too many. But... I think a Cole Palmer, if you end up getting stuck with him and then you have to face Sheffield United away from home in a single, don't think that looks too terrible. Game week 31, Everton at home. And then in game week 32, they have a double of Man City away and then Arsenal away. So 32 does look pretty tough. Um, they've only lost once in their last eight games, which was that Liverpool Cup final, like I mentioned. But they do have no clean sheets in those last eight. So... Maybe not so good defensively. Um, Cole Palmer, 14 goals, 14 assists. And he's got 28 returns in 35 games with 20 bonus points. He has been incredible this season. Uh, someone that I brought into my team last week. And as you can see with this uh, graphic, he'd done the business again. 11 points against Leicester. Probably could have got even more if he hadn't have given that penalty away from Raheem Sterling. He's nailed for 90 minutes twice a week. And yeah, 11 points in this game, 12 points in the game before, 10 points the game before that. He's hit double figures, three matches in a row. He has been so, so impressive. Um, Malagusto, 47 points in his last six game weeks. I think he's right up there with other top defenders there. Um, so 47 points for him in the last six. White, Ben White has got 54 and Robertson had 49, so Gusto isn't that far off of those. Um, obviously, doesn't have European football, which is a bit of a downside. But if I was looking for an extra player to put into my part of the bus team, I definitely would consider Gusto. Obviously, not as good at keeping clean sheets, Chelsea. But he has eight assists, and he's made 30 tackles in his last six matches. So that's roughly an extra two points a game just from tackles. So if, if he gets his appearance points, say it's two appearance points... And then he's getting um, two points for tackles each game. That's four points. Obviously doubled in the double game week. I think you'll be all right with um, Gusto in there. Um, he's only missed one bonus um, in his last six matches as well. So five matches he's hit bonus. 23 bonus in his last 29 games. So I think Gusto is another good option. Probably not if you're not playing a booster. Um, but I do think he is a good captain pick. Uh, sorry, a good booster pick if you're playing part of the bus. Spurs off the back of a bad result to Fulham, which was a surprise that 3 0 loss to Fulham. They haven't won in their last three attempts at West Ham, which is a little bit worrying about that second fixture. But the first fixture does look good at home to Luton. Um, and Son will be someone that I will be considering for this one. Um, so Luton at home, West Ham away in this double game week. Similar to Chelsea, in game week 30, their single game week isn't that bad either. Nottingham Forest at home. And in 31, they are away to Newcastle. But in game week 32, they do currently have a blank. Um, I'm not sure when it could come, but they still do have fixtures to arrange uh, later in the season. But at the minute... I think if you did go for 29, you'd probably want to move it on later on. Um, I think Son, uh, Son is still a solid buy for game at 29. As long as you're not already stacked with too many non-European players. Uh, Europe is back in 30, like I said. And there's not any other double game weeks currently planned in for Spurs. So if I did go for him, it would be just a one-week punt on game at 29. Um, but he's got a decent record. So only four points against Fulham. But then he got 16 against Villa. Um, and then 10 against Crystal Palace before that. So I do still think that Son is a decent pick. And someone that I'd probably still consider for the captaincy if I had him. Um, Pedro Porro. I know he hasn't been as good. 
as he was earlier in the season. He's on one goal, eight assists with a 6.1 average. But he was smashing it early on in the season. I think it was while Madison was out, he was hitting bonus consistently. He hasn't hit bonus in any of his last five matches. That does seem to have come to an end. Um, he is still taking some set pieces. He took three corners in the last game. And I think that if I was playing part of the bus, again, if I didn't already have too many non-European um, players, I'd still consider a Pedro Porro. Uh, I think he has still shown that he is decent in front of goal or creating big chances. Yudogi, he's another option at the back. I, I think I'd still prefer Porro. Uh, but Yudogi does have two assists, uh, three assists and two goals. And he's got a 4.7 average. He's hit bonus in his last two matches. So maybe he's stolen a bit of Porro's bonus. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I think I still would opt for Pedro Porro if I was going for a defender from Spurs. United, two away fixtures. So Brentford and Chelsea. On paper, they do look pretty tough, actually. But they've had back-to-back -back wins against Liverpool and Everton. And their away form has actually been better than their home form this season. So a Still think that game week 29 could be okay for Man United. And like with Chelsea, like with Spurs, we've got eight game weeks left of the season. Um, so I know City, Liverpool, Arsenal are probably the best to target for fixtures. Um, but if you are going to start picking out a few differentials, I think you are going to have to come to some of these teams um, on and off. Uh, so Bruno Fernandes could be a decent option for game week 29 sort of told myself that I wouldn't be considering him uh, after he stung me a few times this season. But he is now the fifth highest scoring midfielder in the game. He's been such a confusing player. Before the season, all the sort of data from last season was indicating that he would do well on this new game type. And then, where he did have quite a few blanks, his high price was falling a lot, and his points were quite disappointing. Um, so it was looking like we must have must have made a mistake when we were looking at him potentially doing well this season. But he has managed to claw it right back. So you've got Foden, Saka, Bowen, Palmer. But then Bruno Fernandes is on 224 points. So not too far behind uh, Cole Palmer there. He is on penalties. Um, he's averaged 7.3 across his last three matches, which is good. Um, and he would be a massive differential at 0.7% owned in the top 1k. Um, but he is two fixtures short of these European players um, because he doesn't double in 30 and he doesn't double in 31. But if you were looking to take a punt in 29, he would be a big differential. Again, Dallow could be someone that you consider in your part of the bus if you're playing that this week. Sixth highest scoring defender in the game. He is only seven points behind Virgil van Dijk for the season. And obviously Virgil in our heads, is having a really, really good season. Dallow is not that far behind. It just doesn't feel as glamorous, but he does a good job on Dream Team. Two goals, four assists, um, fifth highest defender, four tackles, and then 24 bonus points for the season. Um, in terms of fixtures, I still probably prefer Gusto, and I still probably prefer Porro, but we can't ignore that Dallow is having a decent season on the game. And then Garnacho. I feel like he deserves a shout-out, but not someone that I genuinely would consider at the minute. He's got five assists in his last two matches. Um, but yeah, not someone that I'll be considering at the minute. I think, personally, with United, I'll be looking at maybe getting on it maybe 31 or 32 when that good double comes. West Ham. Game week 29, Newcastle away, Tottenham at home. And they did well against these teams earlier in the season. Um... Spurs have just lost 3-0. And then Newcastle's form has been a little bit dodgy. I think that's two losses in a row now for Newcastle. And Newcastle have got a lot of injuries. So it could be an okay double game week despite it looking a bit tough on paper. Um, but then if 30, Wolves away. And then Leverkusen away from home. That is going to be a really, really tough European tie. Uh, Leverkusen, 38 games unbeaten. And they haven't lost this season. I think it was a draw and a win against Bayern Munich as well. So Alonso doing a really, really good job there. They then face uh, Bayern, at, uh, Bayern Leverkusen at home in 31 and Fulham at home also. 
And then 32 is a single of Crystal Palace away. Um, so Bowen and Kudus, still really the conversation for me. With these fixtures, I'm not interested in going after the defence. Kudus is currently flagged with a knee injury. Um, I don't know how serious it is. I've got a few West Ham supporting friends and they seem convinced that Kudus will be fine. Uh, obviously, we'll wait for the press conferences tomorrow. Um, but I'm leaning towards just keeping him in my team anyway. Um, both Bowen and Kudus were quiet against Villa. Uh, Bowen, two points. Kudus, one point. Bowen was taking right-sided corners um, without James Ward-Prowse starting, which makes him even more appealing. But I expect that James Ward-Prowse will be back because Edson Alvarez is suspended in the Premier League. Um, and then... I think that's two matches. And then the first leg of Europe. So he will miss three of the next four matches, Edson Alvarez, which is a big miss. Um, but I expect that that means that Ward Prowse is going to be back in there and taking the set pieces. Over the last six game weeks, Kudus has 54 points and Bowen has 52. So points-wise, nothing to split them. But Bowen is 86% owned in the top 1K. And Kudus is just 21% owned. So Kudus would be the differential. He's the guy that I've got. But it is worrying when a player is as highly owned as Bowen at 86. Um, Bowen has 18 goals, 7 assists. Kudus has 11 goals, 6 assists. So Bowen better with attacking returns. Bowen's the 5th highest scoring player on the game. And Bowen does score against big sides. So I've got a graphic on the screen from Transfer Marked. Um, he scored in a lot of big games. So he scored against Liverpool twice this season. He scored against Arsenal, Villa, Brighton, Spurs and United. So he does deliver in the big games. And Newcastle, Spurs, Wolves, Leverkusen are all big games. So maybe that will come into your thinking. Um, but Kudus is a bonus magnet. So 45 bonus points from 34 games. Um, I mean... It is really difficult to split them. Uh, I wouldn't be against having both, potentially, if you're looking for something a little bit different. Newcastle. Now, this, I mean, this is back in punt territory. West Ham at home, Everton at home. So I like the fact that these are home doubles. Um, they have had back-to-back -back losses, but I still think these could be decent picks. No European football, so it is probably a little bit short-term. Game week 30 is just a single away at Fulham. 31 is a single at Spurs. And then 32, they just have a single against Palace. So longer term, not that many fixtures. But if I was looking at a striker punt for the game at 29, I think Alexander Isak is decent. Um, blanked away at City last game, but then had back-to-back -back goals before that, scoring against Chelsea and Wolves. 16 goals, one assist. Um, he just played two lots of 90 minutes for Sweden as well. So his match fitness should be there. Um, or otherwise, he might be due an injury. Um but I think that he should be pretty good. Um, I think he's a decent option on penalties as well. Maybe he could be someone that you put in as your 12th man if you didn't want to keep him for the longer term. Kieran Trippier, I must stress, he has been injured. We don't know if he will be back this weekend. I don't think Eddie Howe is going to give any news away that he will be back because he's very secretive uh, when it comes to this sort of thing. But they are the first um, kickoff for game week 29 so we should get team leaks if it turns out that Kieran Trippier is starting I would definitely put him in my part of the bus team if I were to be playing it um, I know he's been out of form recently hasn't been hitting the heights that he has been but just puts in such a good corner such good set pieces such good crosses he's got great attacking upside uh, one goal 11 assists for the season highest scoring defender on the game and has 38 bonus points as well. So even though he's been a little bit out of form. I think if I was doing the part of the bus. I would still get him in there. If we know he's fit. Um, and I've got a lot of defensive injuries. I'm even considering. Because I think this is a hard um, game week to decide on defenders. I'd potentially even have a little think about. Putting him in my team this week. Just as like a one week punt potentially. Um. But obviously, we've got to wait and see if he is fit before that. On to Aston Villa. Um, like I said, I'm not feeling that great on Aston Villa at the minute. So Wolves at home, Man City away. I think this looks like a really tough double game week. Game week 30, though, does look good. So Brentford at home and then Lille at home. 
And then the 31, Arsenal away, Lille away. 32, a single against Bournemouth at home. They do have some significant injuries. They've got McGinn suspended. Matty Cash is now injured. Um, obviously, Kamara and Ramsey, uh, previous injuries as well. So they've got a lot of players absent. Ollie Watkins. This is a tough one. So, form has been a little bit sketchy recently. Two points, um, two points, six points against Ajax, and then three points against West Ham. As you can see on that graphic, last four matches have been quite a drop-off um, from his good run where he was getting hitting double figures in quite a few matches. But I'm always a little bit wary of Watkins because there's been a lot of times where I've taken him out and he's done well. Um... Obviously having a really, really good season. Lots of goals, lots of assists. I feel like if I didn't have him, I wouldn't bring him in for Game Week 29. There'll be a lot of players taking him out to play part of the bus. If they've got Salah and Haaland, Ollie Watkins would be the one to come out. But I feel like if you're not playing a booster and you've got him, it might be best to keep. But if I was... Bringing in a striker specifically for this game week, I think I prefer the likes of um, Son, Salah, Darwin over Watkins for this week alone. But the problem with taking Ollie Watkins out is that game week 30, Brentford home, Lille home does look good. And they've got plenty of double game weeks coming up. So you might be wanting him back if you do take him out. One thing to consider, so obviously we see he's got City up coming up. Um, also Arsenal, he does only have one goal against the top six side this season in Spurs. Uh, he's blanked twice against United, twice against Arsenal. Uh, sorry, once against Arsenal, once against City, uh, Liverpool, and then once against Spurs. I just feel like he punishes me when I take him out, so I'm a little bit worried about taking out Ollie Watkins. But he's got 19 goals, 15 assists, third highest striker in the game. Tied with Darwin Nunes. And he's behind Salah and Haaland. So big decision on Ollie Watkins. I'll come on to my team update because I have him. Let me know in the comments below what you're doing with Ollie Watkins. If you're taking him out for a booster. If you've currently got him and you're keeping. Or are you thinking about moving him out? Let us know. Right, quick look at boosters and captains. So captain picks for Game Week 29. I think that Mohamed Salah is my top pick for captaincy. Um, as you can see. In a minute, I've got the armband on him currently. I think Brighton at home, Sheffield United at home are really great fixtures. He's on pens. What's not to love about this game with Salah, in my opinion? Um, Haaland, I'd put him second, but he does have questionable fixtures. Arsenal at home, Villa at home. Both tough fixtures, but both at home. He's on pens, but he did just miss one in the international break as well. So I'm going to put him in second. Um, you have Son. In third, Luton at home, West Ham away. I still think he's a decent option. Um, on penalties as well. The only thing I'd say about Son is Richarlison is back. We don't know if he's back ready to start. But if Richarlison starts as striker, Son will get pushed out to the left. And he's a little bit um, less effective on the left. He's still really clinical. But I would prefer to have him playing as the striker if I was going to be captaining him. Um, Cole Palmer, I'm going to put him fourth. Burnley home, United home. So again, both home fixtures. Good form for Palmer. I think Chelsea are a little bit of a less reliable team than the ones above. Um, again, on penalties, I like to have a penalty taker as my captain. I will put him in fourth, but I still think he's a decent pick. Like we saw in the previous graphic, he's hit double figures in quite a few games recently too. So I think Salah, Haaland, Son, Palmer, all good captaincy picks. Um, but I'm fancying Salah for this game week. Part of the bus, game week 29. So I've already played mine, played it back in game week 9. Um, but I think if I already had a bulk of Liverpool defence at the moment, I think 29 makes the most sense to play it. Um, Virgil van Dijk, Connor Bradley, my two favourite Liverpool defenders for part of the bus. Uh, Robertson would have been in there, and it's a big blow that he's now injured. I'd still include an Arsenal defender in the mix, Ben White, Gabriel. And then I'd take a punt on probably one of these. So 
probably go two Liverpool. I'd probably go one Arsenal. Um, and then I'd probably put, sorry, two of these in. So Trippier, Gusto or Porro. If Trippier turns out to be starting, I'd definitely put him. And then I'd probably choose between Gusto and Porro if I was playing it. Um, there are other double game weeks coming up. Obviously, 31-32. Um, both European double game weeks, but then there's some tough draws. Um, but that game week, game week 32, looks like it could be another decent opportunity. You've got uh, Manchester City, Chelsea, and Brighton. You've got United playing Coventry and Sheffield United, so that could be a good one for United defenders. Arsenal double with Wolves and Chelsea. Liverpool double with Fulham and Everton. Chelsea, Chelsea not so appealing. City and Arsenal both away. So I think that that game week 32 could be an option if for whatever reason 29 doesn't seem to be working for you at the minute a bonus if you do wait for that 32 um trent alexander arnold could be back fit by that point as well one of the best attacking that's one of the downsides of this week i mean if trippier is out and obviously trent alexander arnold is out you've got the two sort of best attacking defenders both unavailable for your part of the bus so something to think about but i still think game week 29 is okay and then 12th man, um, if I didn't already have Salah, Palmer, Nunes, I'd get one of them in as 12th man. Otherwise, I'd take a punt on Son, 14 goals, 8 assists, a 7.4 average. Isak, 16 goals, 1 assist. Obviously, again, on penalties, 5.8 average. Um, and what I like about them too is that with them not having Europe, if you bring them in as a 12th man, you don't have to transfer them out again. You can just bring them in for this double and then not worry about it after that. You can focus on using your transfers, getting European players in. Right, before I come on to my team update, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Game week 28, I've got 36 points, taking me from 304th down to 342nd. I didn't think that was too terrible. Uh, I think it could have been a lot worse. I had Edison, um, obviously injured. I had Gabriel and Saka both blanking for Arsenal. So considering the lack of players, I don't think I did too badly. Um, and considering I had a bit of a captaincy foul going for Haaland and just getting the four points when Palmer got 11, Salah got, 11, uh, Salah got nine, I think it could have been a lot worse. Um, Kudus and Palmer came in for Pascal Gross and KDB. Um, obviously, Pascal Gross was blanking and KDB was injured as well. Um, so this gained me 12 points because the other two didn't play. Um, so not terrible. I thought Kudus was probably going to do a bit better than what he did. But Palmer really did smash it. And he could have done better if he'd taken that penalty and not Sterling. Um, so overall, not too disappointed with how this week went. But I am expecting um, a bit of a rank fall with people playing up um, or potentially playing boosters in Game Week 29. So that is something to consider. Um, so Edison blanked. Virgil van Dijk got me zero. Gabriel blanked, Robertson with the four points, Saka blanked, Foden four, Kudus one, and Palmer 11, Watkins with the three, Haaland with four, and then Mo Salah with nine points. I was pleased with him. Um, right, flagged players. I've currently got five of them. Edison, Gabriel, Robertson, Saka, and Kudus. Kudus, I think, is going to be okay. Saka and Gabriel, I'm pretty certain, are going to be okay. So those three are... I'm all right keeping hold of. Edison, I'm not so sure. I think Ortega could start. And then Robertson, we're pretty sure that Robertson is going to be missing with that ankle injury. This is based on just rumours and my own thoughts. Press conferences haven't been yet, so we haven't got any additional information. But yeah, I think Saka and Gabriel will start, and I think Kudus will probably be all right. Edison and Robertson, I am not so sure about. Um, so I think that Edison and Robertson are going to be the guys that I'm looking to take out this week. If I had no fires in this team, I would be looking to maybe switch Watkins, like I said, to a more upside striker. Um, obviously, Wolves and City, it's quite tough fixtures. I'd have preferred maybe a Darwin against Brighton and Sheffield United or a Son, uh, Luton and West Ham. I think they're better options. But... I think I can't be taking out Watkins when I've got this many potential injuries or flagged players. Um, Robertson, I think it's definitely got to go. And Edison being a doubt, I think it might be time to move in and him on. So, Robertson and Edison replacements. I'd ideally want someone that plays in Europe. 
and someone that's likely to start two matches. Def- keepers are a bit easier to figure out. Defence is a little bit harder. Um, West Ham and Villa, I'm going to rule them out. I don't rate their defences um, and I don't think their fixtures are amazing. Um, so I'm not looking at West Ham or Villa players, which then leads me to City, who Walker, Stones, Akanji, all injured. Obviously Edison injured, potentially. Um, so I don't think City are that appealing. They're facing Arsenal and they're facing Villa. Diaz is probably the only one that I'd be considering. Uh, so I'd avoid them for now. And then that leaves Liverpool, who probably have the best fixtures, Brighton and Sheffield United. Um, they have Europe, so they qualify there, and they've got good European draws. But they're unpredictable outside of Virgil van Dijk, who I've already got. So Robertson's obviously injured. I mentioned Simakas and Gomez. I think there'll be rotation there. I think Connor Bradley, probably the best option in defence. And then obviously Kelleher as the goalkeeper. Um, both look okay. But how long-term are both of them? So Bradley could be at risk by next week when Trent could be back. And then Kelleher, the Allison one has been a bit unclear when he could be back. So Kelleher could come in, um, but eventually you'll probably be moving him on. So Kelleher or Bradley are probably two good options from Liverpool. And then I don't mind Arsenal, and I know a lot of people will agree with this, but I don't mind Arsenal. Tough City match, but decent Luton game. Um, Then a hard run in, but overall Arsenal have been the best defence in the league. Um, And I'm still pretty confident with their defence. The thing I like about Arsenal defence as well, no rotation. As long as you're maybe not messing around with Kivior and Zinchenko, I think Gabriel, Saliba... Ben White are all safe. And then David Rea is safe as well. Um, so I think I'm narrowing these two options, Edison and Robertson, swapping them to either Kelleher and Bradley, Kelleher or Bradley, or Rea or White. So I wouldn't mind a combination of the two. So potentially moving Edison out to Rea. And then moving Robertson to Connor Bradley. Um, I think I'd be more confident that Connor Bradley plays twice this week. And then if I did if I did Raya and Bradley, I could keep Raya or aim to keep Raya for a longer term. And then if Trent does come back and it looks like he's going to be back available most matches, I wouldn't mind moving Connor Bradley over to Trent. That way I'm only replacing one of them. I feel like if I went for Bradley or Kelleher, or Bradley and Kelleher, I could end up having to replace both of them. And with just eight game weeks left, I don't want to keep changing these defenders and goalkeepers around. Um, So I think if I went for Raya, I think it'd be for the long term. If I went for Bradley, it'd be Bradley with the view to changing him to Trent. Um, I've got four million in the bank, so that'll be fine. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And Arsenal... And a Liverpool defender or goalkeeper currently in for Edison and Robertson. Um, I'm going to expect to hear more when we get the press conferences coming up um, on these injuries. So we might have a bit more clarity. If, for example, Kudus ends up being injured, um, I may end up just keeping Edison and replacing the player with the higher points potential and replacing Kudus. Maybe looking for a, a Diaz, for example, Luis Diaz. Um, or maybe KDB if he's back available. But yeah. Currently, I'm looking at replacing Edison and Robertson for a Liverpool or Arsenal defender uh, or goalkeeper. The only other option that I would potentially consider, say I did go for a a Kelleher or Raya in goal, is if we did hear that Trippier was starting, I'd potentially take a, a punt on Trippier instead of Robertson just for the one week. And then if we hear that Trent's back after that, moving him on to Trent. But I don't like booking in these transfers and I'll be getting in a non-European playing defender. But I'm going to leave the door open on that one. Um, I will be going through my transfer plans uh, when we do our live stream on the Dream Team Tonic podcast. We, We usually answer everyone's questions, get right up to the deadline and then 
let everyone know what moves we'll be making. So again, link in the description below for the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Thank you for joining us on this episode. If you've got any questions about Dream Team, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Um, Have a good Easter and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.